<clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I gave my word, and I keep my word to one of my colleagues that I was going to be as calm, Councilman Jones, and Councilman, Councilwoman Gill, as I possibly could. And I'm going to do my best, because you all know how I feel about keeping my word. But you know what's been rising up inside of me as I sat here and listened to my constituents, residents of our great city of Philadelphia, doing the greatest thing that they can do is access democracy by using their voice as a tool for economic justice. My grandmother would say, inside voice. I told you to use your inside voice. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, since I introduced this bill, bill number 180741, it has been faced with a Facebook lobbying and Twitter posting miseducation that has intentionally misrepresented the facts about what this bill does. <laughs> I want to start with home ownership. The city of Philadelphia has approximately a 52 home ownership rate, and I represent a district that has a 64% home ownership rate, and in some of my regions, it's as high as 74%. So there's no one who can claim home owner supreme on me. I represent homeowners in the city of Philadelphia, but I also represent renters. I represent renters and homeowners who have also found themselves to be victims. Victims of fraud. When you take your hard-earned money and you look at a good listing and someone tells you the home is available and you say, here's my first week and here's my last week and here's my security and then two weeks later someone comes who is the actual legal owner and they say to you, I never intended to rent this property to you. I'm, I'm the real owner. You, you, you have to vacate the premises. That's very unfortunate. And I know there are some people who would like to think that is a hypothetical that never occurs. But you work and walk through neighborhoods throughout the city of Philadelphia where unscrupulous Philadelphians or others do exactly what I just described. I quickly, I quickly want to address a few rumors. And to my colleagues, I'm, I'm working on the councilwoman. I'm going to address some of these rumors, and I'm going to call them what they are, which are lies. And they've been percolating about my bill. So what we're going to do today is to see whether or not the Facebook posted um, uh, uh, Twitter announcements, if that fake news that you thought was only moving about in Washington, D.C., but has dominated social media outlets right here in the city of Philadelphia relative to this bill, we're going to see whether or not the fake news wins out or whether or not the facts matter, because that's what my colleagues and I are elected to do. We don't deliberate Facebook posts. We don't deliberate on, on, on Twitter postings. We deliberate on facts that are presented before us. This bill does not undermine the existing bill on squatters. Next, it's not soft on crime. It very delicately balances protecting rightful home dwellers and victims of fraud while ensuring that those who trespass or break into someone's home will still face fines and imprisonment. The bill does not create a loophole where someone can just claim to be a victim of domestic violence and that's their get out of jail free card, the squat. In this, in this era, of this, this Me Too era, where women's voices are finally being heard and people are telling them that we will listen. It is offensive, deeply offensive, to say that there are instances of false accusations of domestic violence, just like the instances of false rape accusa accusations. And do they occur? It has, but we have a police department and a team of investigators whose job is primarily to do that, investigate whether or not there's credibility in any allegations.
nations. Second, the law's language makes it clear that it only protects victims of domestic violence living in the same household as an owner or someone who recently lived there. This is so the law can't be weaponized against an abuser to illegally evict their victim. Now that might sound strange to someone else, but until you walk the mile in the shoes of a woman or a man who's been abused, don't, don't attempt to teach and preach about what you don't know. Finally, finally, this claim is offensive because the police department, again, will investigate. Next, let's talk about victims of residential lease fraud. Councilwoman Reynolds Brown, I know your advocacy for our senior citizens. And if you want to feel the pain of a constituency that's been negatively impacted by this, I want you to talk to a senior citizen who experienced what I just described earlier, when they know that they can no longer maintain the house that they worked hard for, and they say I have to downsize. Because I can't, my, my, my office acting up. I can't walk up the steps. I need something on one level. And then they go to rent. And they learn that they've been scammed. Those are the people who we have to make sure that we are protecting. And it's not sexy. Let me say that too about this bill. This bill is very compl complex. It's, it's very legally nuanced. And if you are not paying attention, if you're reading Facebook and you're reading Twitter, but you're not reading the language that's included in this bill, you can be sexually enticed. You know how you, you can be enticed to think this is in the best interest of the public. I'm going to finally conclude with this. All I have to say is if you vote for this bill, you're not gutting the existing bill. If you vote for this bill, you're not creating loopholes. And if you vote for this bill, you're protecting homeowners and their most valuable asset, which is their home. And we've been doing too damn much in this body or home preservation to think that we would pass a law where we're not going to try to help people preserve what they have. Next, if you vote against this bill, and this is where my 10 district council members, and I hope you hear me well. And I know for those of you who I've talked to about this bill, you will. You are voting against homeowners with tangled titles. Now, I know you all think that some, and most in this city, when they pass away, they have a will and an executor of their estate. And if they have five kids or one child or nieces and nephews, they very specifically outlined how their property should be distributed amongst their, their loved ones who are left. But if you think that kind of privilege is accessible to all of the people in the city of Philadelphia, again, you're talking about a process that you don't know anything about. The reason why I sing your law, and the reason why I CLS, and the reason why um, the, uh, the Public Interest Law Center, uh, along with the Tenants Union, why their advocacy was so important in them being here today, and I want you to know this. I'm a council person, and as the late John Myers told me, my job is to fix things. And there is nothing more frustrating when somebody comes to me with a problem and I can't fix it. It's because we can't give legal advice. It is illegal for the attorneys who work for individual council members to give legal advice. You know where I send them? Because my people can't go to the big guys downtown. I send them to CLS. I send them to senior law. I send them to the Public Interest Law Center. And let me tell you one thing. I'm going to take the advice of that constituency that I just described over some fake sexy news and some folks that you oh, I felt so bad for the people. Some of them I knew who came here to testify today and knowing that I'm listening to them and they're talking about things that are not accurate. Don't support this damn fake news. Support the facts. That's what we do here in this country.